Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is 10 to Life where we are talking everything true crime. And I'm going to get right to the point, guys. Today we are talking about an active case of a missing 20-month-year-old little boy. And I'm just going to say it right now too, this feels like a page was literally ripped out of the Casey Anthony and Megan Boswell playbook. There are a lot of inconsistencies, a lot of red flags, and so many questions out there as to what could have happened to this little boy, what could have, you know, who could have been involved, why are people lying, and is there something deeper going on here? So I'm going to go through with the entire case with you, the timeline, I've got visuals for you. We're going to go through everything that we have learned up until this moment, and hopefully we can get answers for little Quentin Simon. So guys, let's jump right in. Sent to life with Annie Elise starts right now. There is a quote that says, grandchildren fill a space in your heart that you never knew was empty. For many people, some of the greatest moments in life include getting married, having babies, and then getting to witness your children go on and have babies of their own. Having grandkids must be so great because typically you just love on them. You spoil them and then, you know, you give them back. You don't have to deal with the responsibility. All the tough parts of childhood are left up to their parents because you've been there, you've done that, and now they're doing it. But as we know, that's not the case for many families. So what happens when your children aren't equipped to take care of their babies? And if an adult child is dealing with addiction, legal trouble, possible abuse, does the responsibility of caring for those grandchildren now fall on the grandparents' shoulders? So just when life seems like it might be slowing down, the nest is empty, retirement's on the horizon, suddenly now the home is filled with toys, sticky fingers, and chaos of kids all over again. Now, while nobody is ever forced to take legal custody of their grandchildren, many grandparents do choose to do this to avoid the alternative and putting the kids in the system and going into foster care. Unless there is a death or extremely serious situation, I'm sure most grandparents assume that these situations when taking them in will be temporary until their child can get it together, get back on their feet, get sober, get out of jail, whatever the problems they're facing. They look at it as once they're back on their feet, they will then resume the responsibility of being a parent. And oftentimes to do that, their child might move back in with them as well, kind of go through the whole motions again. I mean, the works. It's no surprise either that tensions might run high when you want your child to get on the right path so that they can again resume that responsibility for their own kids and their own lives. And that's exactly the situation that Bobby Jo Howell has found herself in with her daughter Leilani Simon. Bobby Jo and Leilani have reportedly been at odds and arguing a lot, especially recently. And so much so that Bobby Jo actually went to the courthouse and filed a formal eviction notice to get Leilani, her fiance Danny, to move out of her house. So getting Leilani and Danny to leave seemed like the most stressful situation going on in Billy Joe's life. And it was hard for her to imagine things getting any worse, but they did. And all of that drama was nothing compared to the situation that the family would soon find themselves in. October 5th, 2022, the family's lives would be turned upside down when Leilani's 20-month-old son, Quentin Simon, seemingly vanished into thin air. With Leilani and her fiancé boyfriend whatever guy, Danny, being the last ones to see him, Billy Joe has said that she doesn't know what to believe or who to trust. When researching the details of this case, there are just so many red flags and details that don't add up, as I was saying. And all of this is making it even harder to answer the question, what happened on the morning of October 5th? Where is little Quentin Simon? And most importantly, is he still alive? Billy Joe and her husband, Tommy Howell, live on the Atlantic coast in Savannah, a city in Chatham County, Georgia. Now, let me walk you through this family tree because it does get a bit complicated. Billy Joe has four children from different fathers, Nathaniel, Joe, Leilani, and Paul. 
Billy Joe's son, 29 years old, Nathaniel, is currently incarcerated, serving a 22-year prison term for robbing and murdering a man in 2011. Billy Joe's son, Paul, is currently living with her and his stepfather, Tommy, as well as Billy Joe's 22-year-old daughter, Leilani. Leilani's three-year-old son, Zane Warren, 20-month-old son, Quentin Simon, four-month-old old daughter Sky Youngkin and Leilani's fiance Daniel Youngkin also live there. Leilani had her first son Dane with a man named Cody Wharton, her second son Quentin Simon with a man named Bubba Moss, and Sky with her current partner Daniel or Danny. And not much is known about Billy Joe's other son Joe. So people close to the family have said that Billy Joe and her daughter Leilani have always had a rocky relationship. In Billy's own words, she said that Leilani hasn't always done the right thing, and that sometimes she does really great, and sometimes she doesn't. During those not-so-great times, for reasons currently unclear, Leilani lost custody of her two sons, Zane and Quentin, when Quentin was just five months old, indicating that CPS had actually been involved with the family. The boys were put in custody of their maternal grandmother, Billy Jo, who has been doing her best to care for her daughter's children as well as balance her marriage and a job outside of the state, I believe in Illinois, I think. Don't quote me on that. When Leilani got pregnant again and had no stable housing for herself, her new baby and her fiance, Billy Jo, allowed them to come and live with her until they could get back on their feet. Billy, Joe, and Tommy both work full-time jobs, and Leilani was able to get a job at a local liquor store, while her fiancé, Danny, has been apparently pursuing a mu music career and trying to become a rapper. Don't ask, guys. I'm not going to judge. So most days when everyone was working, a woman down the street named Diana was babysitting Leilani's children for about $30 a day. She apparently charged $15 a day for each of the boys, but nothing for the newborn baby girl. And I guess this arrangement was set up through Billy Joe, the grandmother and mother of Leilani. But allegedly the boys would show up with belt marks and bruises all over. And the kids were often dropped off without diapers, without milk, without anything. Just a huge red flag that screams neglect. Even worse, evidently the boys were often found playing in the ditch outside by themselves, meaning there was little to no supervision from the parents of these little children. Like I mentioned earlier, with such a full house, tensions often ran high between Billy Joe, Leilani, and Danny. Billy Joe felt as though Leilani and Danny weren't earning their keep around the house and had constant messes everywhere, were just disrespecting the home and ultimately overstaying their welcome. There's an expression that my dad once had said, and what is it? It's like house guests are like fish. After two days, they start to smell and you want them out of the house. Now, if you're a fish person, don't come and don't cancel me, but I'm just saying. So they were starting to overstay their welcome here. Now, according to Billy Joe and even several neighbors, there was constant arguing between all of the adults in the home and the police were called on more than one occasion. The most recent argument that led to 911 being called was on September 7th, 2022, when both Billy and Leilani called the police and Leilani was telling officers that she was on probation and didn't want any trouble. Now, it's unclear what Leilani is on probation for, but during the police visit that night, her brother Paul told officers that Leilani has a history of stealing and using the money to buy drugs. Billy Joe told Leilani and Danny several times that she wanted them to move out, but when they didn't, the next day on September 8th, she decided to go and file the formal paperwork and that eviction notice to be sent by mail to the home so that she had documentation and a paper trail of trying to get her daughter to leave. It's not exactly clear if Billy Joe was trying to evict Leilani, Danny, and the children, or just the two adults. But Leilani still had custody of her daughter Skye, which means if she is putting out Leilani, she'd be putting out baby Skye as well. Now, legally, I don't think she could have Leilani take the boys with her because Billy Joe had custody of them. So this could be why Leilani was so reluctant to leave if it meant that she was going to have to leave her boys behind as well. On September 16th, the eviction notice arrived in the mail, and Leilani and Danny found out about Billy Joe filing this at the courthouse. So even after the formal notice, the couple and all of the children were still living at Billy Joe and Tommy's residence. As you can imagine, irritation, resentment, and just a truly volatile environment grew even stronger after that eviction notice. And on that same day, Leilani made a Facebook post that read, can't even horseplay with my man and kids without someone coming in the room and assuming the worst. 
And to me, that kind of indicates that somebody in the home was possibly questioning what was going on behind closed doors with Leilani, Danny, and the children. Perhaps thinking that this roughhousing is, you know, not that, and maybe it's targeted, and, you know, it's being initiated by Leilani and Danny on the kids, and they're trying to lie and say that it's roughhousing. With Billy Joe having custody of Zane and Quentin, the state filed an order for Leilani and Zane's father to begin paying child support to help with Billy Joe's expenses and caring for the children. Leilani was due in court for this child support case on September 22nd, but did not show up for the hearing. And due to her being a no-show, Leilani lost the case by default, and it was ruled that she would begin paying her mother child support for Zane and for Quentin. Over the next couple of days, Billy Joe got a temporary job out of town, which was supposed to last three weeks. And this probably came as a relief to her and to Leilani to get some much needed distance between the two of them and for Billy Joe to get a break from all this chaos that was happening at home. Now, I'm not sure if with Billy Joe having custody of Zane and Quentin, if it was legal for her to go out of town and leave them with Leilani or not, but she said that her husband Tommy would be home and the boys are with the babysitter a lot of the time anyway. And I don't think it's illegal because even if you, I'm thinking of you in my own situation, like I I mean, obviously my husband and I both have legal custody because we're, we're married and not separated, but if I were to leave for several weeks at a time and left them with somebody, I don't know how that works exactly. And if you can shed some light on that, please let me know. So maybe she thought that it would be a good time for Leilani to prove herself as a mother and have some bonding time with the kids and step up to the plate. So the babysitter Diana has said that she usually does watch the boys and baby Sky five days a week and even watches them if Leilani is not working. The kids are dropped off usually around a, the kids are usually dropped off approximately around 5:30 to 6 a.m. and they're supposed to be picked up by 3:30 p.m. But oftentimes they aren't picked up until around 6 p.m. because of Danny taking extra hours at work. On Tuesday, September 4th, Danny and Leilani picked up the kids from Diana's house and told them that they would see her the next morning. However, the next morning on Wednesday, September 5th, at 5.29 a.m., Danny texted Diana and told her that they didn't need her to babysit because Leilani would be with the children that day. According to Danny, he got up, he saw little Quentin in his pack and play, and then left for work at 6 a.m. Diana said that that was a little bit odd, that the plans changed on such short notice, and because she usually watched the kids regardless of whether Leilani was working or not, and also because the night prior when the kids were picked up, they said they would see her the next morning. But, you know, she wasn't too concerned. They just lived down the road a little bit, so she thought it was odd, but wasn't going to be too suspicious off the bat. That was until she got another text message from Danny at 9 a.m. asking if she had seen Quentin. So shocked by this question, she quickly headed over to their house to see what the hell was going on. She arrived at Leilani's house and asked what was going on, where was Quentin, and then ultimately if they wanted her help to go look for Quentin. But in a very shocking response, they told her no, and that they didn't want her help because they already looked. Now this I have a real problem with, because not only for the obvious reasons, you would want everybody looking for your almost two-year-old baby, but even more, at this point, they had only been looking for a couple of hours. If Quentin was last seen at 6 a.m., which according to the boyfriend and Leilani, that's when he was last seen, which I'm sorry, I don't even believe that, but even if that's true, that means that even if Quentin vanished the moment they last saw him, they would have only been looking for under three hours. So to say, no, we already looked, we don't need your help, where'd you look, where'd you go, did you leave the house, when did you look, did you look outside, it just really does not sit right with me that you are turning away help so early on. Then Diana asked Leilani if she called the police, and shocker, she also says, no, I haven't. So Diana is the one who told Leilani to call them. So Leilani told the police that when she woke up, the front door was open and Quentin was gone. Here's my question. If you woke up and your baby was missing and the front door was wide open, why would it take you hours to call the police? And not just that, but why would it take somebody else prompting you to call the police for you to even call them? So Diana, the babysitter, went in her car and called Billy Joe, the grandma, who was again out of town for work, and she informed her that Quentin was missing. Since, big surprise, at that point too, Leilani hadn't even told her yet either. And then, in a true page out of that Megan Boswell and Casey Anthony playbook, Leilani told her mom that Quentin's dad came and picked him up. But here's the thing. 
the police have now ruled out Quentin's dad. He was nowhere near there and was not even involved in Quentin's life at all, apparently. So this was just complete BS. So this search for missing Quentin begins, and the grandma and the grandpa, who were also out of town somewhere, arrived back at home, and they gave initial news interviews with the media. And in these interviews, the grandma said that she does not trust her daughter, Leilani. And she said, and I quote, I don't know if I can trust her or not. And she hasn't always done the right thing. As the media interviews continued, in a strange and kind of brief twist, the grandma Billy Joe also started blaming the babysitter Diana. Now, it's unclear if this was true blame or if Billy Joe was just absolutely grief stricken, but apparently Diana had suggested wanting to do a prayer circle, and Billy Joe took that as her wanting to do a memorial. Two very different things. And this offended Billy Joe, and she exclaimed how they didn't even know if Quentin was dead yet, and how Diana was overstepping her boundaries, and that maybe she came and took Quentin from the house. So it was very heated and very passionate, which I do just want to say, I personally have no suspicions at this time that Dana, Diana had anything to do with this. However, in an effort to be completely objective and unbiased, it isn't unheard of that caretakers who really love the child or children that they are watching over can begin to think that that child is better suited with them 100% of the time and do something like kidnap the child. Now again, in this case, I don't think that is at all the scenario, especially with the text messages that were sent, the timeline, not at all. I just want to mention that it does happen. So after Billy Joe said all of this, Diana went on Facebook Live explaining about their family and all of the details. So I'm going to include that video here, but if you've already seen it and if you want to fast forward and skip ahead, feel free. Um, my Facebook, I'm not coming on here to start, start drama. I'm not an attention seeker. Um, so I don't want anyone to think that, like I'm not. Um, and I wasn't even going to say anything. Um, until what happened happened today. And this is not directly about Quentin. Um, I don't know any more than y'all do know about Baby Q. Um, it's just something that happened today that I wanted to get straight, clear the air. Um, stand up for myself, definitely. Um, so... <clears throat> what time is it? What time is it? Okay. Um, I got just a, a few more minutes, guys. I told everybody eight, but I wanted to go ahead and let some people get on. There's a lot of people right now sending me um, friend requests. Um, honestly, I can't, I don't know how to get off and then accept it and get on. So I'm just going to stay on here. Um, hopefully, I did make it public so everybody should be able to see. Um, someone just sent me a message saying when you get on, if you put at everyone, then it'll share with everyone. All right, I guess I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, there's a lot of people. Okay, <clears throat> so as everyone knows, and I have got so many messages um, why I'm not talking out and why I'm not saying nothing. Um, because I didn't feel like it was my place. Um, I did keep Quentin, and I'm going to start from the beginning. How I met Billy Joe and Leilani is through a lady that used to go to my church, um, Miss Sandra. She, her and her mother, Miss Audrey, they're very awesome people. And she called me and asked me, told me the situation, and asked me if I was interested. The next day, I got a call from Billy Joe, 
um, asking me if I could keep her two grandbabies. And I said, yes. Going in, I had never met them. I didn't know the situation that was going on with Leilani, Billy Joe, Danny, none of them. Um, I started keeping them. And I didn't know anything at all. And then <clears throat> the more I seen, I seen a lot of stuff. And I was concerned. No, I did not call back because I voiced all my questions and concerns to Billy Jo, the grandmother. Um, she told me that she had custody of the boys. I didn't know why. She didn't tell me that. Um, but they were staying with Leilani. Billy Jo worked out of town. So when I started seeing things that wasn't quite right, I would call Billy Joe and I would tell her. I would text her. She didn't answer. She was at work. Um, she'd text me back and she'd say, okay, I'm going to talk to Leilani. Um, several times, the boys were outside. One particular morning, they were outside in the ditch. My daughter seen them and come running in. We went down there. Leilani was nowhere in sight. Um, I called Billy Joe. She got in contact with Leilani. Leilani was home. She was just in the house somewhere. Um, they would drop them off with no diapers. They would drop them off with no pull-ups. Uh, and when the baby came, Sky, they wouldn't send no milk. Two days, I had to call Danny because Leilani wouldn't answer me, answer me, which is her fiance, to bring me milk for Sky. Um, I kept texting Billy Joe. I took, my daughter took pictures and sent them to Billy Joe of Quentin having bruises. Um, everything that I'm telling you can be backed up. This is not hearsay. This is not me trying to get attention. Who wants to get attention over a baby? Um, we sent her pictures. I sent her multiple texts. Um, she texts me back one day and she said, okay, um, I'm tired of this. I want you to keep the babies permanently until I can get back home. I told her I would. And I did. So, it was about three, two to three hours later, she calls me back. She said, well, I'm going to give Leilani a chance. You know, she's a young mother. Um, I've got to be able to try to trust her. She said, I did a lot of bad things. I got my kids taken away. And I want Leilani, I, I want her to know that she can do anything she wants to do. And I'm going to support her. So I didn't keep them um, day and night. Leilani made it clear to me that she didn't want me to keep them like her mother had wanted me to. So I kept them during the day. They dropped them off at between 5.30 and 6. And they picked them up, was supposed to, their schedule was 3.30. But sometimes they worked over and said, her boyfriend would say, text me and say, I need to work um, a couple extra hours to make up hours, so can you keep them until 6? I would do that. Um, we fed them. We took them places. I, I love them. They're kids. Like, who's not going to love a kid? Um, so that's a little backstory of how I even met them. Okay, now let's get to the day that this happened. I keep them every day, Monday through Friday. I kept them sometimes at night. At 529, they text me, no, I'm sorry, Tuesday afternoon, they went home at 4.30, 5 o'clock. I got up in the morning at 5 o'clock on Wednesday because they usually got here around 5.30, 6 o'clock. I get a text at 529 saying, the kid, from Danny, the kids are not coming, Leilani is with them. I put okay. Was it a little unusual? Yes, because even when she was off, I had them. She didn't know that we could see her. They sit on the front porch, but if me and the kids, and my kids too, but mine are basically grown, would go to leave, she would be on the front porch smoking, but she would duck and run inside so we wouldn't see her. But I had no problem keeping the babies. Was it for money? No, it wasn't. I charged them. I didn't even charge them for Sky. I charged them for the two boys, and it was $15 a piece, $30 a day. Okay, so back to what I was saying. So I text Danny okay. Didn't hear nothing back from him. 
I got up. My husband went to work around 730. Um, we was outside. My son also lives on this road. So he was going to work as well around 830. From 730 until 830, we was outside. We did not see Quentin. Nowhere. Okay. So then me and my girls, we go to McDonald's. They want a McDonald's. I got, I live on Chatham Partway. The McDonald's is literally right down the road. On our way back, I get a text from Danny. He says, have you seen Quentin? I said, no, why? Well, immediately I called him. And he said they couldn't find Quentin. Okay. So me and my oldest, well, my oldest daughter here with me, we go over there. We get in the car and we go over there. I let my other daughter out. When we get over there, I asked, okay, he's a little boy. He likes to play and seek. He likes to get in my daughter's closet and play. He could be in a closet. He could be in a cabinet. You know, maybe he's playing hide and go seek. Me and my daughter help you look. Um, they didn't want that. He stood there. He looked at me with the most coldest look I've ever seen and said, we've already looked. I said, okay. So I stood there for a minute and I looked around outside of where I was. Leilani was smoking a cigarette and Danny was standing there. And I go to get in my car. I was going to call Billy Joe and I did call Billy Joe. She didn't call him. Leilani didn't call the police until I said, have you called the police? And then she calls the police. Um, so... We started to leave. Cops came behind me. I could not leave. Um, they, I guess they said whatever, what it was on the property had to stay there until after um, they checked everything. So I left. I came back maybe about 30 minutes later. I asked Leilani and Danny, I said, do you want me to take um, Zane home? So, you know, y'all got a lot going on. She said yes. Danny said yes. I asked him to get me some shoes for the baby. They got me shoes. I came home. I called Billy Joe. Billy Joe had no idea. I've never spoke badly about Billy Joe. Um, but today, she came to my house after I told her. I texted her. She called me at 6.30 this morning. I'm sorry. I'm everywhere because this has been a lie. She texted I mean, she called me at 6.30 this morning. We were talking. Everything was good. I text her. I told her I was going to cook, that we were going to get flyers and put them everywhere of Clinton, and that we was going to do a prayer circle over here. Never said that we was going to do a memorial for Clinton because I didn't believe he was alive or that he had passed. Never did I say that. And I can back all this up because we have cameras. Like, everything I'm saying to you, I can back up. And I... You know, it's just ridiculous. So she told me basically not to text her no more because she thought that I was overstepping. Well, I am just the babysitter, but I took care of them kids when their mother didn't take care of them. Um, and I don't really have nothing to say bad about Danny because he would actually ask me these last few weeks, Miss Michelle, did the kids have everything they need? Um, did, do they have pull-ups? Because Leilani wouldn't do that. Now, um, another thing I want to get to, Billy Joe, after she barged in my house, after all that, she come down the road. I don't live far from her. She barged in my house. This is all on camera. I jump out my chair. She gets in my face, cussing me. I cussed her back. I said some pretty bad words. Yes, I did. Because she barged in my house. Okay. My daughter was also recording. She tried to take the phone from my daughter. Uh, she told me that she thought I took her grandbaby. Like, that is the worst thing that you could ever said to me. That is worse than punching me in the face. She did not hit me. I am not scared of her. She didn't hit me. Um, she just yelled in my face a lot. But I yelled right back, okay? Um, she said that I had sold her grandbaby. How do you do that? Someone that has been good to your grandkids... Someone that has six kids of her own that are grown. How do you do that to somebody? And then she started screaming all the way down the road for my neighbors to hear. And like, I don't care because they know me. They know the person I am. And then she started saying that she 
paid $700 for my kids to go to um, Splash in the Burris. My kids are grown, okay? She asked me to take Quentin and Zane. Yes, she did buy the tickets. Just like I told the FBI agent, I never use them tickets. Them tickets are still there. The, the ticket thing is still on my phone. I never took her, grand, her grandkids. I never took mine. She's never did nothing for me. I literally did not charge them a lot of money to keep these babies because I was worried about these babies. And not only me, there's neighbors up and down this road that has seen these babies outside. And I'm getting a lot of mad faces, and that's okay because I have the truth. Every text that I have sent Billy Joe is on these phones. Every text, every conversation I've had with Billy Joe is recorded in my house. So the FBI can check this. I don't care. Like, I never want to go bash nobody. I am a Christian, but a Christian can stand up for herself, especially when you accuse me of stealing your grandbaby. I would never do that. I don't have anything on my record. I've never had defects at my house. My, my kids are grown. My kids have done really good. Like, I'm not, and I have no reason to judge anybody. I mean, I've did stuff in my life. I'm not perfect, but never the stuff like that. And I just love these kids. And I didn't steal nobody. I didn't. I didn't do anything wrong. So she can bash me all she wants to, but God don't like ugly. And it's going to come back on her for doing this, 100%. So somebody keeps asking me and asks me, did I think Leilani do, did I, do I think Leilani done it? I'm going to tell you this. That a mother that lets her kids outside, that doesn't watch them, that numerous people have seen, that they, they're bruised, they're dirty, and there's plenty, plenty of evidence of this, you tell me what you think. I told uh, Billy Joe my concerns. I sent her stuff. And she didn't listen to me. So she can't blame anybody but herself for what has happened. Nobody. And I see a lot of people commenting, but I can't do that. I can't answer all these questions right now. Um, I don't know much about what's going on over there. I don't know what the FBI is saying. I did talk to the FBI. They checked my cameras. Um, I told them I would take when I called the police today on her because I was going to press charges. You can't. Just bust in someone's house, and I'm still going to do it. I'm calling a lawyer Monday morning. You can't just bust in someone's house and then try to take their daughter's cell phone and hit their hand. You can't do that. Like, that's not allowed. Um, but this has got out of hand. This is about Quentin. This is about Monkey. And, yes, I am just the babysitter, I guess. But I watched out for them kids more than their mother ever did so you can say what you want about me have all the opinions you want but it doesn't matter because I know the truth and other people know the truth and that is exactly what I wanted to say that's it I'm praying that Quentin is still alive I'm I, I'm hoping he is I would love to just be able to see his face um, he is a precious child. So is Zane. So is Sky. Um, I don't know what happened to him, but I know what they went through. I know what their mother didn't do for these kids. And she didn't. So this is, this is what I wanted to say. I wanted to come on here and say that Billy Joe can spread all the lies that she wants about me. It is about finding the this baby, this precious baby. And you know what? God is in this situation. God knows. He, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. God does, but it'll all come out. Everything that happened will come out. So hate me, like me. I don't care. This is the truth. It is my side, but it is the truth. And like I said, I told the FBI, they have all these phones 
They have all the messages where I've sent. Literally, Quentin come over the other day with bruises, belt bruises on his arm and on his neck. I text Billy Joe. I never got a text back. I never got a text back. Um, so I don't know what happened to these babies. I just know that this baby, I just know that I didn't do anything to the baby. We loved him. And I think that it's not okay for Billy Joe just to come in my house and uninvited and do what she thinks she can do and spread rumors about me. It's lies. So that's all I got to say. Um, yes, Billy Joe did tell me that she had custody of the boys. Um, I'm answering a question. She did tell me she had custody of the boys and that Leilani did not. Um, and I, like I said, I've never said nothing about bad about Billy Joe, but she come after me for no reason. I, I, I know she's got emotions right now and people, you know, already comment on my thing. Well, you shouldn't do this to the grandma. Well, she shouldn't do it to me because I was the one that was here with the babies. And all I was doing was trying to tell her what was going on. So if I'm a bad person for that, then let me a bad let me be a bad person for that. Um, could I go through the timeline again? Okay, at 5:29, I got a text on Wednesday morning saying that from Danny that they was not coming. Leilani was with them. Then at nine o'clock. I got a text from Danny saying, asking me if I had seen him. I said, no. I called him immediately. He said they couldn't find him. I went over to their house. She did not end up calling the police until after I got there. Um, it was about, I think it was about 935, 940 when they finally called the police. Um... And literally, that, that's all I know. All I know is what i seen, and not just me, it, it's more people down here, this road, what i seen when they were with Leilani. That's what i seen. I never um, said that I was their mother. I'm not their mother. I'm just someone that cares. That's it. I'm just someone that cares. And sometimes I think that gets me in trouble because I care too much. But... Um, but yes, that, that's all I got to say. I just wanted to set the record straight. I just wanted everyone to know what was going on. But I have texts, the, all the texts that Billy Joe and me text today. I never cussed her. I never said anything bad to her negative. She just went off on me for no reason. But I, ha I can back everything up. Everything can be backed up. So I'm going to let it go after this. I'm not going to worry about it no more. And I'm going to put it in God's hands. That's all I can do. So thank you all for watching. Um, I know everybody on here. There's so many people around the world that is praying for a monkey. I called him monkey. Me and my girls called him monkey. Um, and he would just smile ear to ear. And he smiled with his eyes when you called him monkey. He just smiled so big. But we're praying. We still have faith. And that's all I got to say. But thank you guys um, that joined. Thank you um, for the positive remarks that's been coming in. And thank you to those who just are bashing me. It's okay. I know. So, all right. Well, I hope y'all guys have a good night. If you have any more questions, I can try to answer them in my message. Um, this is really just overwhelming to me, everything that's going on. Um, Yes, ma'am. I do not think Billy Joe is innocent because, like I said, I got in contact with her several times about what was going on. And I never said that before. Um, but if, you know, you're going to blame me for this and I've been so good to your grandkids, um, I'm going to tell you how I feel. I feel like you should have come when I text you all them things and told you what was going on because then babies needed you. And you went in there. So, yes, that is not my truth. That is the truth. So, y'all guys have a good night. I know y'all are praying. We are all praying. And 
Thank you. Um, I, I I come back on live for a minute, and the reason I did is because I I, I have read some of these comments, and um, most of them were very positive, but there was a couple I didn't like. Okay, first of all, no one ever paid me three hundred dollars a week. That's a lie. They paid me on Cash App, and I have my Cash App. Every time that they would pay me, okay. They would call and try to borrow it back because they would tell me before I knew she was on WIC, Leilani, they would call and um, say, um, well, the baby don't got no formula. Um, could you let me borrow $30 and I'll pay you back, okay? All this is on text. So with Billy Joe, I know, was on my live, but what she is saying, that I got $300 a week, that is a lie, and God knows it. I literally have my cash app where they sent me money from Leilani um, cash app. They did not send me $300 a week. And when Billy Joe tells you that she paid for my family to go to Splash in the Borough, them tickets has never been used. I told the FBI agent everything today. We was talking about everything. Them tickets had never been used. My family didn't go, and neither did I take her grandkids. So that's a lie. But like I said, what I have, I've got proof. I've got text. I've got everything that proves that that is not true. Leilani would send me $15 here, $20 here, and then tell me, oh, can I pay you next week? I didn't do it for the money. So that's not true. It's not true. And these people saying I'm trying to bash Billy Joe, I didn't try to bash her. She's the one that came to my house starting. I never said I was going to make a memorial of baby Quentin. Never did I say that. But just like I said, these people know me and they know Billy Joe. And I've heard a lot of things about her that I didn't want to believe. But these people know me. And they know my character. And they know who I am. So I am sorry that... They feel like they have, Billy Joe has to bash me. I hope that she feels good doing this, knowing that this is supposed to be about Clinton, and all I was trying to do is help. That's not my grandbaby, that's not my baby, but is a baby, and I loved him. And I love him. I love him so much, and I'm praying that he, something happens. But like I said, God has everything under control. And no, no one paid me 300 a week. And I did clean her house. I cleaned her house two times, and she paid me. But I got pictures of that, too. See, I always take, because I do clean houses before and after pictures, and that $150, I earned it. I earned it. So, like I said, I have text. I have everything to prove and back up what I'm saying. Everything. So no one can say she paid me 300 who was on my live. No, no, I never got paid that. No one can say I'm bashing her because I didn't want to do this. I did it to let people know that what she was saying about me was a lie. But I already know that they do. And so I'm, I'm going to be okay with this. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to continue to pray that monkey comes home to them and that he's okay. That's what I'm going to do. But I just wanted to set the record straight. Billy Joe has never paid me $300. She sent $300 one time in my cash app because I got the text where I texted her and told her these babies had no diapers, no pull-ups, or nothing. Mm. Yes, I, I did. And she sent it. And I, she sent me money to get them clothes. And I sent her pictures of the clothes because they literally had no clothes. When they come over here, they was always dirty. And I never said that they were dirty. I even said when Billy Joe was home, it was different. They was clean. When they come over here, they was clean. So, absolutely not. She never did anything that she said. But like I said, she's got the text on her phone. She knows. We all got text. She knows what was done. And I really hated doing this because Miss Sandra is an awesome person. And... Like I said, I met, I didn't know Billy Joe and them. I met them through Miss Sandra. So, you know, whoever is texting me these things, it's not true. But, like I said, it'll all come out. Everything will come out. 
And if you have questions, text me, and I will answer your questions. But I just seen, you know, Billy Joe coming on here saying that, and it just really, it really made me mad because it's not true. And, you know, I'm getting things on here, oh, you're a Christian, you shouldn't be doing this. I'm not, I'm a Christian, but I can take up for myself. So, I'm done. Police gave another press conference on October 10th and stated that they still didn't have any updates. They basically communicated that they are researching and revisiting the places, though, to be as thorough as possible and to make sure that they have an absolutely ironclad case should anyone end up being prosecuted. Now, something that does give me pause but has not yet been confirmed by law enforcement is that allegedly a family member spoke out and said that she believes Leilani waited for the garbage truck to come that morning before calling the police, and that that is the reason for the delay. Again, this is unconfirmed by law enforcement, but something that is being said. So let me just kind of share my opinion really quick with you guys. Based on the timeline, based on the lying, as far as saying that Quentin's father came and picked him up, which we all obviously know is a bold-faced lie at this point, based on waiting to call the police, based on the 529 text message. I would be shocked if the mother and the boyfriend were not involved. I think it could be two things. I mean, clearly there is a tiny window of time in which something happened to Quinn. Not tiny, but pretty small. If they picked him up on Tuesday evening around 6, and then they sent that text message at 529, it's my belief that something already had happened at 529, and that that was now, you know, now they were putting the plan in motion for the cover-up. Not the crime itself, but the cover-up. So that's less than 12 hours of a tiny window of time. Now, I think that there could be a sliver of truth in the statement when the boyfriend says that he saw Quentin in the pack and play at 6 a.m. when he was leaving for work. Now, perhaps he sleeps in the pack and play. We don't know. Perhaps he was just in there. Now, we all know that babies should be very, you know, carefully watched at that age, at any age. So could there have been an accident in the pack and play, such as suffocation or something like that? And they're telling a little bit of a half, half truth here, possibly. Apparently, they have a swimming pool, and the kids have been out wandering before without supervision. Could there have been an accident after returning home that evening on Tuesday, and Quentin wandered into the swimming pool? If they were waiting for the trash truck to arrive and leave, I don't think that that would necessarily be in an effort to get to get rid of Quentin himself, but possibly any forensic evidence and things of that nature possibly remains. I don't know. I think that my belief just based on covering so many cases like this and following the Megan Boswell case so closely and Casey Anthony so closely, I would be shocked if the parents were not involved. And I think again that that 529 a.m. text was part of the cover-up, not the crime. And I think it was because they knew that Diana obviously was expecting to watch them. But what if they don't ever watch their children even with their, when they're not working, why all of a sudden now say you're going to watch all three of them and you don't need the help, but then he leaves for work at six. So are you telling me that while Leilani was still asleep, all three of the kids were still asleep until she woke up? I would imagine some of the other kids must have heard something, saw something. Now, while they can't interview them directly yet, um, or they can have an advocate working with them, I mean, it gets a little, a little bit tricky, and I know that's why police are being very careful here. I think that it's going to come out soon. That's my guess. I think that we're going to get little pieces of information soon. I'm sure that there's going to be something on the tech, certainly, always. And they said that they are obtaining more search warrants right now and that they're in the process of um, obtaining them and they will be executing them shortly. They did search the house already, to my knowledge, but they are going back and doing another search, they said, because they want to be thorough. I think I heard somewhere that they are looking at a nearby pond. I also think they said something about draining a pool. So I'm not entirely sure, guys. There are, is so much information swirling right now that it's hard to make sense of a lot of it. And of course, updates are happening regularly. So I'm sure that we are going to learn more very soon. In the meantime, they are asking for any tips, any leads, any information. So please, if you have a credible tip, not something you saw on a Reddit forum or in a Facebook group, but if you have a credible tip, please share it. 
And even if you don't, please share the link to this video because perhaps somebody somewhere who does know something, who has heard something, who has seen something will come across the video, will come across Quentin's little face, and then they will be like, oh my gosh, I need to call the police. And that's how, you know, good leads and tips get generated. So even if you don't have the information yourself, at least please just share this link somewhere on your social media because the more widespread it gets, the more likely eyes will be on it and we can get some answers as to what happened to this 20 month year old little boy a boy that age is probably walking by now I would say but to wander off he couldn't have gone far so if there really was a thorough search and there has since law enforcement stepped in there has been a very thorough search he couldn't have wandered very far to where he couldn't have been found by now it's my opinion not like I think he could have wandered yes but then to conceal himself in such a way that professionals and adults can't find him feels very unlikely even if he obviously concealing himself by accident is what I mean so I think I think that he was probably placed somewhere and I, unfortunately I think that this is going to be um more of a recovery than a rescue but I really hope I'm wrong so please say a prayer for this family and please say a prayer for little Quinn. I'm going to keep you guys updated and let you know as soon as we hear anything else. In the meantime, please share this case, spread it, and hopefully we can get some answers. All right, guys, until the next one, stay safe. Bye.